Okay. So uh, this is where we left. And again, this is a very, very important point that you need to take care of in uh, our preparation for this exam. And that is the professional marks. You cannot ignore the importance of professional marks. I mean, 20% of your paper is professional marks. So now in some of the other exams where it's just four marks of the paper, you can still say, okay, okay fine, even if I'm not uh, getting these professional marks, that doesn't make much difference. But with this exam, when it's 20% of your paper, you cannot afford to lose these professional marks. And interestingly, you don't have to work very hard for these professional marks. It's just the way you structure your answer, the tone of your answer, the style of your answer, the logical structure of your answer, the format of your answer for which you will be getting marks. Because if it's a report, it should look like a report. If it's a memo, it should look like a memo. So they're very, help, uh, they're very easy marks. I mean, they're not difficult marks and uh, you can score them very easy with a little bit, little bit of practice. And you don't have to, to be honest, write anything extra to score these. So they're, and this is something that is going to be of great help. This is going to be very helpful for you in your real exam. Once you, uh, when you will sit for your exam, you will get to see that this is actually very helpful for you. So we will be talking uh, a lot about these professional skills and professional marks. And they represent, as I've already told you in the beginning as well, 20% of the exam is professional marks. So you cannot, in any case, afford to lose them. And you will learn the real worth of these. I mean, I salute ACCA for incorporating this within the syllabus because this is so much relevant to the real world. I mean, in real world, you are expected to demonstrate such professional skills. So ACCA has actually embedded those skills in the uh, professional qualification that which is uh, excellent okay another very important thing that you need to keep in mind is that you need to understand that that the task is performed for a particular purpose for a defined user stakeholder now this is very important this is very very important you need to understand if you're preparing a report to whom is the report addressed is it addressed to the board of directors is it addressed to some junior team member? Who is going to be the user of that report? What is the purpose of that report? Because that is going to drive the tone, style, structure, and format of your answer. So I hope you can understand that this is linked. This particular aspect is linked to professional skills and professional marks. Uh, then you should also uh, be careful about, do, do not forget to take your calculator in the exam for financial analysis and evaluation. There's a, a section on your syllabus, there's a section on finance in your syllabus where you're required to perform computations, some analysis, some calculations, some investment appraisal calculations, even so ratio analysis, trend analysis. So for that matter, it is very important that you don't forget to take your calculator in the exam. Now, this is another very, very important skill. Analyze how every piece of information, including the numerical data, is relevant to your answer. And this is a strategic professional exam. No one is going to tell you that, okay, fine, this is a calculation, do this calculation, then do this, and then do that. They're going to give you a very open-ended requirement, and you need to think what relevant material you need to bring in, what relevant financial non-financial, narrative, non-narrative information you need to incorporate in your answer. You have to exercise the judgment for yourself. It's a strategic profession level exam. So you need to keep in mind that you have to develop this ability to think how the different information and, and the bits of pieces of information scattered across the case study are related to a particular requirement and how you're supposed to use them. This is an aspect that we've already discussed, but let's discuss this again quickly. Producing a balanced answer, the production of a balanced answer that cannot be overemphasized, especially with requirement work such as discuss, evaluate. Please make sure that you're discussing both the positives and the negatives, the pros and the cons, uh, the short term and the medium term and the long term aspects of a decision, for example, because that adds balance to your answer. And that's how decision making actually happens in the real world. No one takes decisions 
uh, on the basis of short term only no one takes decision on the basis of long term only no one takes decisions on the basis of financial factors only no one takes decision on the basis of non financial factors only there are a host of considerations that are employed that are used in order to arrive at the final decision so it is important that you actually give reflection to this by reducing a balanced answer by taking uh, taking into account all of these factors Uh, development of points includes prioritizing the significance of the points or explaining the implications for business, other stakeholders. If there's a political factor, how is that an opportunity for the business? How is that a threat for the business? Why is that a threat for a business? What is the significance? For example, if minimum wages have increased, and all of your workers are already above minimum wage. I think there's no impact of that for your business. You're already compliant. But if you have a 60% of your workforce that's working below minimum wage and minimum wages have increased, then the cost of doing business has increased substantially for you. So you need to see, you need to consider the impacts. COVID-19 situation, it has dented some businesses, most businesses, I would say, but then it has created uh, an opportunity for a lot of other businesses. Zoom, for example, the platform that we're using, thanks to Zoom, I mean, it's an opportunity for them. There are a host of other allied industries that are practically benefiting from this, right? Your internet service providers, they're definitely at an advantage because of this. So you need to, you know, uh, be able to develop the points, say why they're important, what are they, why they're important, and what is the significance of those issues for the business. You need to develop them in terms of explaining the consequences, the positive, the negative impacts that those particular issues can create for the business. Range of sources for case study. I told you that the case study has got a lot of exhibits, a lot of annexures. So what sort of information would be there in the annexures? There would be interviews with staff. There would be survey results. A customer survey, for example, customer satisfaction survey has been conducted and you will be given the results of that survey. Then there will be board reports, organization reports, minutes of the meeting, press articles, website extracts, organizational reports, integrated reporting, IR extracts, integrated reporting extracts, emails, memos, spreadsheets, pictures, figures, tables, diagrams. So there will be a host of uh, information presented in multiple formats. And from various sources and the even this list is not exhaustive but this list is quite comprehensive in that in that it covers most of the stuff that you would see on your examination paper now another very important guidance coming from the examiner is skills assessed in SPL are practical analytical rather than academic technical and that's where which poses the real challenge I mean the skills are practical, they're analytical in nature. For example, data analysis of spreadsheets and their interpretation, analyzing visual aids such as heat maps, flowcharts, process maps, problem identification and resolution, making supported recommendations. The recommendations have to be such, the recommendations have to be such that they can actually be implemented. I mean, the viability of the, you have to make recommendations that are suitable, that are feasible, that are acceptable, that are viable. Then uh, you will be expected to draft reports, memos, letters, articles, and other forms of written business communication. So communication skills is another uh, area that is explicitly examinable in this exam. And so we will be investing a lot of time in developing those communication skills. You will even be asked to draw up some presentation slides with accompanying notes. Now you see, this is a presentation slide. So a presentation slide has to look like, uh, has to look like one. I mean, it has to look like a presentation slide. You would never see long paragraphs in presentation. What I'm displaying at that moment is a presentation slide. So you see, they're just pointers, they're just bulleters. So you would have to produce a presentation slide that's just in this format. Okay, as far as the key examinable areas are concerned, the key, there are nine key examinable areas that you need to take care of that you would have to study. 
leadership, governance, strategy, risk, technology and data analytics, organization control and audit, finance and planning and decision making, innovation, performance, excellence and change management, professional skills. We'll be talking about the key examinable areas, these sections, these are nine sections of your syllabus. We will be talking about a bit, uh, each of these in detail in subsequent classes. Uh, let me tell you, we'll be starting off with strategy. Strategy is the first theme, the first section that we will be starting off with. And uh, it's, it's a very interesting syllabus actually. Um, and I'm sure you would enjoy uh, learning the syllabus and not just that uh, we'll try to work hard to get done with this exam, but you will uh, find this very relatable to your real world, to your workplace practices as well. So we'll start off with strategy in tomorrow's class. As far as the plan of attack is concerned, for the, that is how we're going to go about uh, covering the syllabus for the rest of the few months. In the rest of the few months, we'll be focusing on the key examinable areas. We will be do, doing a lot of past paper practice. We'll be having a lot of discussion sessions. We'll be focusing a lot on exam technique. Exam technique is actually the key to handling this paper. We will be utilizing technical articles and the examiner's reports uh, optimally. Class tests, assignments, I would strongly recommend that you take them seriously so that you can uh, have an idea of where you're going wrong or what are your strengths, what are the things that you need to keep on doing and what are the things or what are the practices that you need to alter in order to achieve success in the exam. You will be taking your mock examination and last but not least, we will try to ensure timely completion of the syllabus. Uh, I'll try to put an end to the syllabus latest by the first latest by the first week of November. Uh, so the winning formula, hard work in the right direction, exam focus preparation. We will be working hard. This, uh, this is a paper that uh, requires hard work, that requires smart work in order, to, uh, for, in order for you to be able to you know, pass this exam. So that's all for today. Thank you very much for your patience. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions, please uh, utilize the platforms and the online channels that are available.